Well, welcome to my next bowl making video. This is going to be a bowl, not a vase. This is one out of Carol Rothman's book that she calls a dizzy bowl, I believe is what she calls it. And her idea of this, of this bowl is to use some scrap material to make this design. Now, the blanks are supposed to be, I'm going to make two blanks. Now, I've got these two made for the preliminary, that put those together to make the final blank. And uh, it's supposed to be nine and a half by nine and a half. And her idea was you use scrap material out of your shop to get a unique design, unique to you and your, your uh, shop material. Uh, to me, though, in the scroll saw business, nine and a half inches is not really scrap. I can do a lot of work with nine and a half inches. But I did have some uh, various things I was able to chop up. I had extra, uh, uh, extra material there. And she also said to use 3H material. And you make this out of 3H, you cut up different sections of 3H. Well, I don't have enough 3H to get that much scrap to start with. I don't use that much 3 8 I do have some. So what I did, I just took different scraps and I ripped them at 5 16 Now she used 3 8 because when you glue these together, you never get them all smooth and you have to do a lot of sanding. And the idea is that when you get through sanding it, it'd be a quarter inch thick. So I thought, well, that's a lot of sanding. So I went with, I just ripped them in 5 16 So that's a three quarter inch piece ripped five sixteenths and then I glued them all on the five sixteenth inch side and I got some still photos of these being ripped and put together or laid out anyway and then I slowly glued them it was over two days I've been gluing these pieces together to get these two blanks and they're identical as you can see that was part of the deal I had to cut them and cut enough for two blanks as I went so what I'm going to do now I'm going to find the, the center of these and make sure they match on both of them. And I'm going to draw a circle. And then cut that circle out without an angle. And then glue those two blanks together with that design slightly off like that. So rotate it around a little bit. And we're going to use that to make a pattern in the bowl as we come up. It's not a real complex bowl. But this uh, is intended to accent this pattern we're going to get. Now I've got all kinds of wood in it. That's purple heart. Uh, there's some mahogany. There's some walnut. More purple heart. I think this is maple. That's walnut in there. No, it's not walnut. That's rosewood. Anyway, and there's some other woods there. I'm not sure. There's some oak in there too. Just whatever I had that I could cut up. It had to be nine and a half inches long uh, to get the width. Of course, I made uh, some of them were longer. I just took it to my cross-cut sled, trimmed it down to nine and a half. And the circle's gonna be well within this. So let me get the uh, center of this found on both of them, get them to match. And then I'll cut that out and we'll glue those together, put them in the bowl press, glue them together and that, and the, that pattern slightly off. So I'll get my compass and my pencil and some measuring equipment and I'll figure out the center of that and draw the circle. So there it is. I got two eight and a half inch circles. Each one of them got eight and a half inch circle on them. I'm gonna cut those on the saw, scroll saw, and then we'll glue them together, get them out of sync just a little bit. There, here we go. We got the pattern mounted. I did my thing with a little diamond I cut in the middle, put the guidelines on the tape, found the exact center, used 45 to get the, the two lines correctly. And then that gives me eight points, four on the outside, because I carry the, the line on the pattern all the way to the edge. That gives me eight points to line up. I don't know that I ever get them perfectly, but that's always worked for me. This is crucial in these. If you want the patterns to work, you got to get everything lined out in the center of your of your blank. The way you got the 
those different woods lined out. That's one reason I use that thick one in the middle. Uh, that one was kind of unique to the whole thing, give me something to work off of, plus it's easy to figure the middle of that in both directions. So uh, got a new blade in my saw, I'm going to cut this with the number five. Everything, as far as I can tell, is at 45 degrees. So I'm going to go cut the outside first, and then I'll come over and use the edge of that to set my uh, grill press. And I'll drill with a number 60 drill bit. And I'll keep working my way through. This has got five rings. And uh, that gives you a nice, a nice number to make that pattern more noticeable, more obvious. So uh, I'll get over the saw and get my camera set up, and we'll get to cutting on it. Well, there's the first kind of dry mock-up, what it's going to look like. Uh, it's surprisingly difficult to line those up the way you want to, uh, the way you, they should look. I'm not sure why. I've always had that trouble with these bowls to line up those designs inside. They just don't match sometimes. It should be very simple, just twist it a little bit, but they don't always. But I'm going to glue these together a couple at a time, maybe three. Uh, so I make sure I keep the line in alignment the way I want it. So it's going to be a long glue process, but that's all right. I want to make sure I get it looking correct. So I'm going to get everything lined out. In fact, I'm going to make sure I've got the rings the way I want them. I'm going to mark them so as I put them together, I'll know uh, which uh, side goes to which side. So let me get that ready, and then I'll start gluing them. Well, there we go. I got his, all the rings glued together. Now I got to sand the internal area. I'm going to use this on my drill press. I know I need to change the sanding pad on it, but I'll probably do that before I get started. But anyway, uh, so far so good. 
I'm making it match up pretty nicely. It's kind of getting the effect I want. You can see it makes a, a wide angle bowl, a 45 degree cut, wide, wide topped bowl. And uh, I think it's gonna look real nice when I get a finish on it. But let me get over there and sand this inside and we'll glue this on there. And uh, then sand the outside. And that'd be, I'll use a flexible pad sander on that. It's, it's matching up pretty nicely and it won't take a lot of heavy sanding. And it won't be a lot of shaping, it's pretty straight sided. So this should be relatively quick compared to some of the other bowls and bases I've done. Well, let me get started and see what I can make it look like. Well, I sanded very nicely. I did go to the inflatable ball sander to get down uh, in there, give me a little more room to maneuver down there. And I went with a finer grit on it and sanded the whole thing. And I like the way it's turning out so far. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue the uh, base on it. And then we'll sand the outside. <laughs> there it is. I think I'm about ready to call that sanded. I grounded this off, smoothed everything down to at least like a 180. I think I'm 200 or better on the outside. And I'm going to mix me up some, some poly. I'm going to thin down some poly. I'm going to wipe it on. And that first coat should show us how well it's going to bring out those colors and the contrast. So let me get that done and then we'll see what it looks like. Well, there it is. That's one quick light coat. Uh, brought out a nice contrast in the wood. Uh, it don't look like I have any areas that need to be sanded because of uh, uh, blue, blue spots. Like something right there. I'll have to take a look at that. But, uh, I'm not seeing anything else that's looking really good. Uh, I'm very pleased with it right now. So I'll take, I'll probably do seven or eight coats. That's what I usually do. That's thin, down pretty thin. And it takes several coats to get that uh, look that I want as a semi-gloss. But it gives a depth to some of the wood, especially like the mahogany right in there. It gives a nice depth to that. And, uh, and, and the walnut too. So anyway, I kind of like that. It turned out pretty well, I think, for taking a bunch of scrap and putting it together. So if you like that, hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. And uh, I don't know that I'm going to do a lot more bowls and vases. I'm not going to stop it, but I've got to kind of move on to some other things now. I've got summertime outside, and I've got some, a lot of things taking my time here. And these bowls are very time-consuming. So, uh, uh, if you like that, hit the like button and subscribe so you can see what I'm going to do next. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.